Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem. And in today's headlines, former French President Nicolas Sarkozy condemns any support for boycotting the Jewish state. The Turkish Lira tumbles to a record low following President Erdogan's AK party's failure to secure a majority in parliament. The International Atomic Energy Agency stresses finding out past military dimensions to Iran's nuclear program will take more than a few weeks. Former French President Nicolas Sarkozy, who is on a visit to Israel and the Palestinian territories, met with Israeli President Reuven Rivlin, during which he condemned any support for boycotting the Jewish state. You know that we are here en ami dans un pays que j'aime profondément et je voudrais vous dire combien nous condamnons sans équivoque possible toute idée de boycott à l'endroit de la démocratie israélienne. President Reuven Rivlin told Sarkozy that the international pressure on Israel will not stop the tragedy between Israel and the Palestinians Reiterating Israel's position in which only through direct negotiations a final solution can be found for the decades-old conflict. I really think that the words should be said that boycotts or pressure, international pressure, uh, appealing to the international uh, organization could not bring us to the possibility of bringing to an end this tragedy only by direct negotiation, we couldn't achieve that. Well, neither Sarkozy nor Rivlin specified which boycotts they might be referring to. Their remarks came after an uproar over remarks by the French CEO of the cellular giant Orange, Stefan Richard, who said last week that the 25% French state-owned group planned to terminate an agreement with Israel's partner communications and that he would do so if the contracts allowed. Israel protested to the French government after the remarks drew accusations that Orange was bending to a pro-Palestinian boycott movement. Meanwhile, Orange CEO Stefan Richard issued a statement to say Orange did not support any form of boycott and had no plans to quit Israel. Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu instructed the foreign ministry in Jerusalem not to receive Richard for a meeting at the Israeli embassy in France and said that if Richard wished to provide explanations, he was invited to come and do so in Israel. Richard's spokesman said that the French CEO will come to Israel in the near future in order to clear up what he called the misunderstanding caused by his statements and to reaffirm the company's commitments and to put an end to the differences of opinion that had arisen. Now to Turkey, where the Turkish lira tumbled to a record low and stocks were hammered, as investors fretted over the possibility of a minority or coalition government after the ruling AK party failed to win a majority in Turkey's parliamentary election. The prospects of deepening political risk has further undermined investor sentiment in Turkey, already seen as an unattractive emerging market due to stalling economic growth, high debt levels and a heavy reliance on external financing. Market reacted very, with a very sharp sell-off as expected. All around the world markets are asking a government with a strong mandate from public and a good economic policy. Some reforms going forward. But in Turkey now, uh, even, even the most likely uh, scenario is probably an early election. The ruling AK party failed to win a majority in Turkey's parliamentary election, dealing a devastating blow to President Recep Tayyip Erdogan's dream of boosting his power. AK will try to form a coalition government as its first option, but an early election could be on their cards if it fails to do so. Demokratik teamül gereği e, birinci olan partinin AK Parti'nin genel başkanı Sayın Başbakanımıza hükümet kurma görevini verecektir ve ben Sayın Başbakanımızın e, süresi içerisinde e, gerçekten Türkiye'nin bu seçim sonuçlarında herkesi e, tatmin edecek bir 
hükümeti kurabileceğini düşünüyorum. The biggest winner of Sunday's election were the Kurdish People's Democratic Party, HDP, whom for the first time succeeded to pass the electoral threshold. Several thousand supporters of the HDP gathered in Istanbul to cheer the party leader and celebrate their party's entrance into parliament. HDP's leader arrived to the rally to the applause of the crowd, proud that their pro-Kurdish party surpassed the 10% threshold needed for a political party in Turkey to be allowed representation in parliament. Biz Türkiye'de istikrarsızlık yaratmak, güvensizlik yaratmak için barajı aşmaya çalışmadık. Biz tam tersine oluşacak istikrarsızlık ve güvensizlik ortamına karşı bir hamle yaptık. Biz uluslararası komploların projesi değiliz. Biz tam da emekçilerin, ezilenlerin, halkın özgür iradesinin projesiyiz. Ve şu saatten sonra da Buna layık bir çalışmayı yürüteceğiz. The success of the HDP also marked a major setback for President Erdogan, who had repeatedly lashed out at the HDP and its leader before the elections, accusing them of betraying Turkey. Now to the ongoing negotiations with the Islamic Republic of Iran, the chief of the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, said his organization is ready to implement a deal between Tehran and the P5 plus 1, the United States, Russia, China, France, Britain and Germany, if it is reached at the end of this month, and any possible military dimension of Iran's nuclear past can be clarified, but it is not a matter of weeks. If requested, the IAEA is ready to undertake monitoring and verification of the nuclear-related measures to be agreed upon under the, uh, the plan. The UN nuclear watchdog chief Yukiya Amano noted, however, that he cannot give assurances on a time frame to clarify nuclear military dimensions, asserting that Tehran's cooperation on the matter is the only way to advance such a process. So I cannot say uh, it, um, uh, how long it will take. Uh, but with uh, the uh, cooperation from uh, uh, Iran, uh, uh, it is um, uh, not a matter of weeks, not a matter of weeks, uh, that we can uh, clarify uh, the issues with possible military dimension. As part of the initial agreement reached in April in Switzerland, Iran was to implement a so-called additional protocol, giving the IAEA more intrusive access to facilities in the Islamic Republic. Iranian officials have been giving conflicting messages about what kind of access would be granted to its crucial military sites. In any case, with a self-imposed deadline set for the 30th of June just weeks away, the IAEA does not have sufficient time to assure the international community that Iran's nuclear program is indeed solely peaceful. Diplomats have voiced concern that once sanctions relief is granted to Tehran in exchange for it curbing its nuclear program under any final agreement, there will be little incentive for Iran to disclose all details of its past activities to the IAEA. Now to another matter of the United Nations. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has decided not to include Israel on the list of countries and organizations in conflict zones that violate children's rights. The Islamist Hamas, which controls the Gaza Strip and is internationally recognized as a terrorist organization, was also left off the list. Yeah. Israeli ambassador to the UN, Ron Posol, said that Secretary General had done right not to comply with the dictates of terror organizations in Arab states, but that this was only the beginning. Posol added that instead of releasing thousands of reports against Israel, it is the UN's responsibility to denounce the terror organizations that operate in the Gaza Strip. Thank you for watching us. We're praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, Eve Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.